Hey everybody, it's Casey here, it's here on Fly and Tackle. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to twitch a jig for coho. All right, so what do we need for twitching for jigs? Two main setups uh, that people will typically use. One being a spinning setup, the other a level wind. I personally prefer fishing with a level wind. I just, that's what I prefer to use. I'm not a huge fan of spinning reels myself. These are definitely the more common twitching setups that you'll see on the river. Just not suited to way the way that I fish. Um, what I'm looking for in a rod for either a level wind or a, a spin cast setup, anything in that sort of seven, seven and a half to kind of eight and a half foot range, um, medium or medium heavy action and, uh, or power, sorry, and uh, faster and extra fast action rod. So what's fast action mean? A fast or an extra fast rod means that it's gonna be stiff until we get to the very end here. An extra fast action rod may only start flexing the last sort of foot and a half, two feet of the rod. Fast action will start flexing slightly sooner. A slow action rod will flex all the way down on the handle. Now, why do we want a stiff action rod or a fast action rod? Reason being, when I'm trying to lift this jig, if my rod's gonna bend all the way down to the handle, I've gotta work harder to lift that jig in the water. This is all about this jig moving up and down in the water column to entice a bite. So can you do it with a slow action rod or a medium or anything like that? Yes, 100% you can. By all means, if that's all you got, go ahead and fish it. More important to be out there than to worry about having the right rod, the, the exact right rod for the situation. But in order to fine tune things to make this the most effective, Having a little bit faster action rod is definitely an advantage. I'll have my reel loaded up with braided line. Personally, you could use monofilament if you don't like braid. The reason I like braid is for its thinner diameter and it has no stretch. So you're gonna get a better hook set. Quite often on these jigs, you've got a fairly heavy wire hook and having no stretch in that line helps with driving that hook home on that fish. So we've got rods. We've got reels. Like I said, I'm a big fan of the level one myself. Jigs. I'll always start with a darker color myself. You can see here, either something with a marabou tail or a rabbit tail. Rabbit tails are a little bit more durable. They last a little bit longer. Marabou, you can't beat for movement. So it just depends on what you like, but I find that both are very effective. You can see just in the wind here, how much more that marabou is moving compared to that rabbit. That being said again, that's a deadly one for me. I really, really like that jig. Like I said, I'll start with a dark color. If I find that I've caught a few fish in the run or in the pool and things kind of start to slow down, I'll switch to a brighter color. And quite often throwing something in that's a brighter color will entice a few more strikes from those fish. Now, how are we gonna fish our jig? So I've got the river in front of me here, currents coming down from my left to my right. I'm never gonna cast way, way, way upstream. Uh, what I can find happens in that instance, my jig's gonna drop down, hit the bottom. By the time I get that slack reeled in and get back in contact with my jig, quite often I'll be snagged up on the bottom. I'll cast slightly upstream or directly across, and we don't want that jig to hit the bottom. We wanna leave it up in the water column, twitching and reeling. Twitch, reel on that slack, twitch, reel on that slack. And there we have a leaf. Get that junk off there. Chuck it out there. Try it again. It's an awesome way to quickly cover water and try and get a reaction strike out of these, or a reaction bite out of these fish. Now, the speed that you work your jig at, I like to vary. I'm a pretty relaxed jig twitcher myself. I see some guys that can work that thing and they look like a sewing machine. Works for them, works in a lot of situations when, you, when those fish are really, really hot, really, really active. We're gonna keep casting that sucker out there and twitch that thing in. Now what's gonna, what typically happens when a fish bites this jig, a lot of times you don't feel it. What happens is that that jig's dropping down in the water and they smack it on the drop. And typically when that's happening, we're reeling our slack in so we're gonna to go to lift for our next twitch, and oh, hey, hang on, there's a fish on the end of the line. Awesome. So we're gonna reel that sucker in, hopefully have a nice one for the barbecue. Cast that out. 
Keep twitching. Like I said, we want to make sure that stays off the bottom. And just work that lure back in, right up tight to your feet. It's quite often those coho will follow that all the way in and bite at the last second, right when it's coming into shore. Jig sizes, most commonly I'll fish a 3 8 ounce jig. A half ounce is, a, is not uncommon if you've got faster or deeper water. And you can also switch up to a little guy, just like this, a quarter ounce for shallower water, slower moving water. Um, and uh, smaller bodies of water as well too. Also good uh, for other species, cutthroat, bull trout, that sort of thing. So just wanted to give you a quick little rundown on how to twitch a jig. Super effective way to fish for coho salmon. Chinook will take them as well. Uh, works for pinks when the pinks way out opportunity for pinks. Not a bad way to catch a steelhead either. Hope you like this video. Hope you learned something today. If you haven't tried twitching a jig, definitely worth something adding to your arsenal, to your bag of tricks to take out on the river. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching everybody. Hit that subscribe button, like this video, share it with all your friends, and more importantly, check us out online, www.c-run.com. Thanks everybody.